Hi, this is Bonnie, and I have another video for you with the new release paper and some of the new release stamps. Um, I'm going to be using the Evening Field um, paper again this time, and the paper that I've chosen um, from this pack is this paper. It's very similar to the one that I, I used in my previous um, video, but this time I'm going to be doing a little bit different. So the stamps I'm going to be using, this is called the Honey House. It is, it is like the honey, it's like the hive, but it is a honey house. And um, we also have a hot air balloon, and this is called Acorn Balloon. And then we did have a new set of dancing bees this time. Super, super cute. And another sentiment. And this one's called Three Things. And one of the um, tips I can give you is if you like this, um, like say you just like this section right here, you can cut these apart and use them um, individually if you want to. Um, I've seen the design team do that, but my suggestion is I would want to have um, one that is complete and then one I could cut apart. So I would probably buy a second one um, so that I'd be able to do that. But anyway, what it says is magic lives in the little things. Wonder can be found in the ordinary things and kindness can be brought to anything. So I think it's really a cool sentiment. So I'm gonna go ahead and get set up and we'll get stamping. Okay, so I have all of my uh, papers placed on my, um, I want to call them, I guess some people call them carrier sheets, but whatever you want to call them on here so I knew where I wanted to stamp so that everything would fit on here. So the first thing I'm going to do is the focal stamp, focus, focal, whatever. And that one is the honey house. And it is quite large. I didn't measure any of these, but this one is quite large, I think. Well, I know that I have also made a video of all of the stamps and the measurements somewhat so you can always check back with that too. This paper is um, just under six by six. So just to give you an idea of the size of the card. And I did ink up my ink pads. Woohoo! And I am using um, VersaFine Clear Nocturne. And so we're gonna get a really good, I'm hoping, Inked. Yay. This one is um, somewhat large, but it's not solid. And I forgot to put my magnet down here. Um, it's not a solid, solid stamp, so it works pretty good that way. Not worrying too much about it stamping. Because my paper doesn't move. There we go. And actually that looks pretty good. I think uh, right here I can see I need a little bit more of the ink. That worked pretty good. But I'm gonna put my magnet back on and give it another little I was considering putting em embossing powder just on the honeycomb design. And um, after thinking about it, I thought, you know what? I really, really like using that glitter um, gel pen. And I think that's all I'm gonna do instead of adding embossing powder. Okay, that's super. That looks pretty good. Oh, well, you know what? The honey could really be, the word honey needs to be stamped a little bit better. There we go. There we go. That's good. I just didn't put pressure in the right place. Okay. So the next largest stamp, I think I'm going to try to make sure I get that sentiment on right. And I think I can. It's just, it's really close. But it'll work. I could even go right there. But it's awfully close to the edge of the other side. All right, we're gonna go there. Okay. 
Oops. Upside down. Be cool if I had it the right way. All right, I think I've got that right. Okay. It wouldn't be that big of a deal if I didn't have to worry about that space. Again, I'm using the Nocturne. I'm actually going to look at it before I stamp it. See if that's going to hit in between. I think so. Okay. That worked. I think I'm going to give it just one more tap. But that G went perfectly in between that. Honeycomb, yay. Okay, super. Set that over there. Now I wanna get the acorn balloon up above. That fits really, see it would fit really good right there in between, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Just as close to that top as I can. Okay. Again, I'm using Nocturne. This one could also be um, done in a brown and be really pretty too, because the bottom of this is an acorn cap. So it could have been done in a brown. I need to be stamped again. I think as I'm looking at this, I'm gonna pull out um, an old fairy hug stamp. I'm gonna pull out some clouds. We have a small cloud set that would work really good in this scene, I think. There we go. Okay. So the last thing I'm gonna put on is one of the dancing bees. And, I'm gonna, and I chose to do the one, if you can see him, um, looks like it's waving. So I think that's really super cute. So even if you didn't do the sentiment, you could do one. We have a fairy hugs sentiment fairy words called hello. And I think that would be so cute to have a hello um, card with a little bee. Okay, so it looks like the little bee is walking and saying hello. Wicked Nocturne. Let me give him just a little bit more. He's so cute. So look at look how nice that acorn balloon looks and a sweet little bee. Super cute. All right, so the one other thing I wanted to do is use the bee from the trumpet um, from the trumpet vine. If you remember, I already did a video with that. Here's that little bee. I think that bee would look really good. Um, on here also. So I'm going to have the bee come in right here. Just 
take off my little dancing bee. And um, I am going to use Nocturne on this one too. And be very careful, like I said, when you stamp this one, it's small. It doesn't need a lot of pressure or it will blur. See? Perfect. And I'm going to have it, I think I'm going to have it down here as well. He's coming away from his little honey house. Because the dancing bees have little bees for friends. Okay. There's that one. I'm not really sure if I want another one. I'm just looking a minute at the picture to see if I want another bee on there. I think we could have one up here. Actually, I kind of like the bees around, but I think, because I'm going to put some clouds up here, I think I'm going to be okay. But I think I'm going to put one under here. Remember, these bees are um, set up in a way where they could be carrying something too which would be super cute. Like they could be hanging on to something. All right. We've got our bees, we are a stamp. I'm just gonna find those clouds and I'll be right back. Okay, so I found my clouds and the clouds are, um, actually the number is 61, so it's an earlier um, stamp. So what I did, is I use some of my washi tape and I'm going to use that as a mask and I'm going to attach because I wanted the clouds to look like they were behind the balloon and I am going to use a morning mist instead because I want it to look more like it's in the background making sure that I'm going to be covering up that washi tape so I guess that's my tip I've done it before I've used washi tape as mask the only thing about using washi tape is if you touch it the ink stays up on top and it can smear um, on your card so you don't want to touch it and then touch your card so that looks good in the background I think I think I want to put it over. I think I'm gonna put it over here too, but I don't know. I don't think I really want a cloud going through the sentiment. So let's see. I have another one. It's a long strip, and it might work that way. I make sure I keep my fingers out of that ink. I think I want to make it go a little closer. Maybe not. I'm trying to see. It's. I know what I want. Sometimes it doesn't work exactly how I want it to go. If I want to stay with the other one. I'll put that back on. This will help me. This will help me. I think that's where I want it. Usually it always helps me visually. Okay. And again, it's just going to be the um, morning mist in the background. I can find where I put my ink. That looks good. I think I might put one up closer to the top. And uh, I need my paper. I'm going to take this off because it's still got that ink and sure as anything, I want to spread that around. Okay. I didn't use that strip one as it turns out after all. Oh, that's backwards. Yep. 
that fits better anyway. I think that looks pretty good. Just see what else we need to do to finish that off. Okay, so for this part of the video, I'm gonna be doing again some coloring um, to give you some ideas of what you can do to add to this, although it looks perfectly fine the way it is, um, other than if you want to anchor a little bit of this at the bottom. So we'll do that first. So if you wanna keep it the way it is, um, again, I'm just, in this case, I'm gonna just use a pencil. This is the 70 French Gray. And I'm doing the darkest, like the shadows, um, closest to the um, to this part of the honey house. That's really kind of like you can call it a beekeep as well. So, and I also want to make it look like it's sort of like a way for the bee to kind of walk to it. So I also put a little bit underneath him as well. And underneath over here, just so that it all looks like it's kind of anchored. I think you can see how that looks. It could also be green. You could add green to this would be great. going to give it just a little bit of texture there and I'm going to add um, this one's called the putty beige just kind of like sort of blending it in it doesn't do a lot because it's very light but it kind of dulls the paper a little bit so it does look like there's a difference again you can always do torn paper and just ink this up that's easy too you could, like I said, you could add a little bit of green, but that gives your shadow shade. Here we go. So that's what we're gonna do for that, so in case you just wanna finish off and just have it that way. So the next thing we're gonna do, let's start at the top. I think this is gonna be fun. So um, I'm gonna be using, um, I think like three colors. Again, like I did in my previous video, I'm gonna use Aquamarine, and this is 905. And so the base of this balloon um, is gonna be a darker color because that's where the sh um, shading would be. So I'm just, I'm not gonna make it really detailed, but um, it's supposed to kind of look like leaves at the top, but you can make it whatever you want. It's a balloon, but you can see how they are. Um, if you want to divide those up into leaves, that would look really super. And that's kind of like, in a way, I'm what I'm doing. So that adds that. And then the next one's gonna be, I'm not really using green so much, I'm using more blue. And um, this one's a non-photo blue. And again, it kind of really blends in with that one. It's just a little bit lighter. Just makes it extend it a little bit. Just gonna add a little bit to the top. All right, and then the last color, a little bit different, is a light green, it's 920. And I'm just gonna add that give it a little bit of brightness. Like where the highlights would be, like if, you know, there was a sun in this picture. So you can kind of see I didn't totally color that in. I left some of the background color to it. And that's how that would look. And because we're already up here, I'm gonna go ahead and do the clouds. And I am just gonna use the non-photo blue for the bottom part where the artist actually um, actually did the shading. 
and I'm just coloring over that shading. And it's going to show up more here because it's lighter in the paper. That gives that a little bit more color because I'm coloring in the shading. So um, I am going to blend in a little bit with the powder blue. Just add a little bit more blue, but I'm going to try to keep a lot of the white up on the top so we have the contrast. Again, this is very simple coloring just to add a little bit of color to your card. So then the clouds would be done, okay? And um, so I am going to go ahead and add um, the darker blue aquamarine to the wings the bottom of the bees. And the darker color um, shows up a little bit more in the darker color of the paper. And I'm also going to do the dancing bee. Add a little bit of the darker blue. And then I'm going to um, blend that in with the photo blue. Again, pretty much the same color, just a little bit lighter. Okay. It's hard to see some of those little ones. I'll put that closer so you can see it. I'll pull it up. All right, so you can see how far we are so far. Those are the clouds and the bee wings, and the dancing bee wings. All right, so the next is gonna be, I'll pull it a little bit closer, whoops, because I want you to see the flowers, they are tiny. And I'm just gonna use a pink, and it's 929, and I'm just gonna give it a little bit of color. There's not much color there. You could, if you have a, a brighter color that would color over this, it would probably be good too, but it does give it some color. Again, you can always test it. If you test out light, you can always add darker to it. It's easier to start out light and add the darker. So, you got the color on that. And then I decided because I wanted a little bit of a contrast between the bee keep and the honey, I am going to use, um, this is pumpkin orange. And I'm just going to do a little bit of shading just to give it a little bit of contrast. Although you can see it almost matches the bottom part of that, the bee keep, if you want to call it that. It's called the honey house. All right, so that gives us a little bit of contrast between the two, but I think I'm gonna add the darker, which I used down below. That's that 70 gray. I'm gonna even add that to the shading because I do want more of a contrast. I think you can see how that gives it a contrast. Oops, I see I forgot a flower. We'll add a little bit of pink. There we go. All right, so that gives us a contrast there, I think. And I'm trying to look to see what else. I think I am gonna add a little bit more to the um, to this part, um, just to give it a little bit more of a contrast even in it. Um, I'm gonna come down here and add some of that darker color. and just bring that up just a little bit in some of those places. Now, it'll look really different if you're doing this on white paper um, because I actually purposefully stamped 
where I knew that it would be more of a golden color. But if you were to stamp this on white paper, you'd be able, if you like the color, this would be a really nice stamp to color in. And that just gives us a little bit of our shading on that, I think. All right, and I'll come up from here. Yeah, that gives us a little bit more of an interest in that. Um, like I said, I'd probably color more if I did it on white paper. Uh, let's put that up just a little bit. So, that's going to be the coloring part. Um, what I like to do, as you know, is I also like to do the, the gold um, sparkle pin. And I also like to do the... Um, I like to add the glitter to the bee wings. All right, I like to add glitter to the wings, period. Doesn't matter if they're bees or fairies. Oh, that's got a lot, so we'll go down here. So I'm just gonna quickly add that to the bee wings. And then I'll do the gold gel pen. This really doesn't take that long, I mean, I'm doing this in real time, so you can see it doesn't take super long. All right, so all the wings are painted. Again, I used, um, I'll just show you again, because I did show it in another video, but it's a Folk Art Extreme Glitter. And it works really well for wings. All right, now for my gold gel pen. So I'm gonna start at the top and go down so I don't put my hand in it. On the um, balloon, you will notice there are little dots, uh, circles. And um, I'm gonna fill each one of those in with this gel pen. Oops, it'd be nice if I could hold my hand steady, but it's hard to see with the camera in my way. But that's what I would do there. You can, see so there we go, you can see that. And then even, because I just like to, I probably will add a little bit to this acorn because I like the highlights. Like, you'll be able to see there's a lot of highlights there. But I'm just lightly dotting it. I don't want to totally take away, away from the design, but I did want to add a little bit of gold. And then... Um, as I told you, okay, the bee comes next. The bee's body, gold, sparkle. And then let's do the hexagons. This is gonna take a little bit more time. So I'm gonna just color in a few for you and then I'll color the rest off. I am leaving a little bit of black on the edges so you can still see the design. I think you can see what I mean. I'll show it closer. Thank you. There, you can see that and how I put it on the acorn too. All right, so I'm gonna do that through the whole thing. Um, but I'm not gonna have you sit there and watch me. So the top of the, the honey, I am gonna color that in with a gold gel pen as well. I'll give it a little bit, not just solid, just a little bit of highlight there. And then the door opening, I'm going to add a little bit there. And take your time. I'm doing a little bit so you don't have to sit there and wait so much for me. And then the highlight that you can see down here in the honey, I'm going to go ahead and do that with a gold gel pen as well. And then um, the center of the flowers, I'm gonna dot some of those. And I can see I'm gonna color the leaves green. And I didn't do that, but I will. So, and then our dancing bee will also get his little body
with gold. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of these, but I just wanted you to see that you can see the little bit of glitter on him. And then the glitter of the house and on the honey that's coming out. And then you can see what I'm going to do with all the honeycomb and what I did with the acorn base of the balloon. Actually, I'm going to do this up here too. Here we go. So I'll go ahead and finish that off and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I've got that all colored in. So you can see how that looks with all of the um, gold glitter on the honeycomb and everything else. I'll just show it to you a little bit quicker or closer. And you can see that. He's super cute. And then the honey house. All right, so um, all of the information that um, will be in the description below, what I used in the links. So um, thanks so much for stopping by.